In this video, we will learn about how to deploy endpoint on clients using integrated remote deployment feature with customized policies. Click on Start, All Programs, CA, Total Defense, Endpoint Protection, and Management Console. The console login page opens in the web browser. Enter the domain name if the account used to login is not a local user account. Then enter your username and your password. The username is not case sensitive, but the password is. Click on Login to open the management console. So this is the dashboard of the CA Total Defense Management Server. This gives an overview of the network about signatures, malware, managed and unmanaged machines, and research blogs. After logging into the console for the first time, run a full discovery to get the complete information of the network. To do this, click on Environment, Endpoint Discovery, and click on Start Full Discovery. After you've installed the management server and you're ready to deploy the agent or end client to the endpoints in your network, you use Endpoint Discovery and perform a full discovery to find all of the unmanaged endpoints. You can then deploy the agent or client using the Management Console's remote installation feature. Coming to Incremental Discovery, after you've fully deployed and implemented CA Total Defense, new endpoints may have joined the network. To find any unmanaged endpoints, after a full discovery has already been performed, you can run an incremental discovery. Endpoints that were previously discovered are ignored and only the newly detected endpoints are then detected. The Endpoints page, which is this, provides a view of all unmanaged and managed endpoints on your network. Managed endpoints have the CA Total Defense agent or client installed. On the other hand, unmanaged endpoints have been discovered by the Endpoint Discovery tool, but do not have the CA Total Defense agent or client installed. What the user can do is that they can deploy the CA Total Defense client and review the status of deployment jobs right from this page. So this is the unmanaged list. This list displays the endpoint's name, IP address, platform, and what date or time the endpoint was discovered. Now before deploying the endpoint, we're going to create a few custom policies to create a customized package. To do this, click on Policies. This displays the policies assigned to an endpoint and the branch to which the endpoint belongs. Use this page to check if an endpoint has downloaded the latest policies. Expand General. This brings certain general policies used by all the components like anti-malware, proactive protection, and others. Expanding anti-malware will display the policies used by the anti-malware component of the product in specific. We're going to create three policies, phone, content update, and real-time monitoring. First, let's go with phone home. All of the policies have default CA recommended policy. We're going to create a new policy. In this box, mention the name and the description of the policy. Also, when creating the policy, the administrator can define whether to give access to the user to modify the configuration or not. By default, this is locked. Click on Next. Over here, if there are more than two servers listed, start using the up and down arrow keys to the right of the secondary server list to position the servers in priority from highest to lowest. In the same order that endpoint should attempt to contact them even if one of the servers is not available or cannot be reached. Next, we will change the phone home frequency to happen every one hour. And we can also use the other options like run and start up or system wake up. After everything is done, click on Save. So we have our custom phone home policy now under the default existing recommended one. Moving forward to content update policy. Enter the name and description of the policy. Again, we lock or unlock the setting. In this case, we want to perform updates on startup. So we check this box. The goal over here is to configure a scheduled update to happen every four hours. 
perform a signature rollback to revert to an earlier version of signature files. Here you see the source for downloading updates. And we can modify the source. You can input the proxy to access your internet over here. We can at this page displays the list of components that needs to be updated. We can either select or deselect based on the endpoint selection. Let's keep all of us as default for now. And last, you click on Save. And the third, you create the real time policy. For this, you click on New. Enter a name and description. Drop down and select what has to be monitored. In this drop down menu, you specify what actions by the endpoint user are actually scanned. We may select one of the following two options. Let's look at the first option. This is All File Access. You will select this option to have the scanner check whenever any file is accessed in any manner. You will select the Read or Execute option, which is the second one, if you want the scanner to check only when a file is read or run by the endpoint user. Writing to a file or performing another action will not activate the scanner in this case. The next option is Scan Mode. Select the scan mode used by the endpoint. You will select Normal if you want the scanner to run in Normal Default Mode. Select Deep if you want to perform additional low-level scanning. Selecting this option makes the scanner run significantly slower than the Normal Mode. Infection Treatment. Select what action you want the client to take when an infection is detected. Select Clean File to have the client attempt to clean the infected file or delete file to have the client attempt to delete the infected file. Select leave file if you don't want the client to make any changes to the file. In this case, the file will remain infected and may cause problems. Select rename file if you want the client attempt to rename the infected file. During a rename, the client attempts to change the file extension to try to prevent the infected file from being opened. And you select Quarantine File to have the client attempt to move the infected file to the Quarantine section. Boot Sector. Set here whether you want the client to report boot sector infections or to attempt to clean the boot sector infection. When you select Report Only, this is to report boot sector infections. The client does not attempt to remove the infection here. When you select Clean Boot Sector, you want to have the client attempt to clean the boot sector if any infections were found there. Scan timeout. You can set a value here for the scan timeout. If the real-time scanner reaches the time limit, which is specified here, it reports a failure due to timeout. Scan fail error action. Here you specify the action to be taken if the scan fails due to timing out. Use the drop-down menu to select one of the options, which is either Prevent Access or Allow Access. When you prevent access, you prevent your end user from accessing a file if the scan fails due to a timeout. When you allow access, you allow your end user to access a file if the scan fails due to a timeout. If the clean fails, specify what action the real-time scanner takes if it cannot clean an infected file. You select Delete to have the client delete an infected file if it cannot clean the file. You select Leave to have the client leave the infected file intact if a cleaning attempt in case fails. The file will remain infected and could still cause potential problems. You select Rename to have the client rename the infected file if it cannot clean the file. And when renaming, the client attempts to change the file extension to try to prevent the infected file from being opened. Select this option to scan any removable media, such as a USB thumb drive, when the endpoint shuts down. 
In case you enable email protection, enter the PATH3 code number used to connect to your mail server. Enter the 